Welcome, everybody, to another life-changing episode of HomeKit Insider. You've got me, Andrew O'Hara, here with the man himself, the Pied Piper of Pastries, the Rock'em Sock'em Robot of Ratatouille. It is Stephen Robles. How you doing, man? I'm good. Pied Piper of Pastries. I'm going to put that in my social media bio. That's pretty good. I, <laughs> I do love a good pastry. Now, from New York, I'm all about the uh, cannoli. You a cannoli fan? Yeah. I do. Fan? I mean, okay. New York is, you know, they've got a lot of, you know, pastry yeah. stuff going on. I'm a, I That's am right. a big fan of cannolis, but if I'm going, like, you know, pastries in New York, I'm immediately thinking, like, croissants, going into cronut territory, uh, and mm-hmm. then just bagels, because bagels uh, from New York are better. They're just... They are. Thank you. Uh, thank you for admitting that. Uh, they're, they're, it's pronounced bagel, but uh, that's fine. I'll let that slide. Uh, what did I say? Bagel. They sound <laughs> the same to me. All I've heard right, people home... pronounce them bagel, and I will fight them. Bagel is ridiculous. Uh, Apple home. Yeah, I've never insane. done locks on a bagel. Anyway, wait, listen, I want I could talk about bagels all day. We have so much <laughs> stuff to get to that uh, we have to start jamming through this. I'm going to sneak one of the things we're going to talk about later in the episode. If you're watching on video, it's a blurry. But, oh, it's now out of the frame. Oh. Nope, just kidding. There it is. Okay, we're going to talk about that, and then we're going to talk about a bunch of other things. You should watch on YouTube.com slash Hulkit Insider for all that. Uh, five-star reviews. Thank you for all of these. Stuffing Z from Great Britain, uh, Las Vegas. I was just in Las Vegas, but he's from Lithuania. We have listeners in Lithuania, Andrew. Do you believe that? Lithuania. I, I don't know if I could point that out on a, on a map. But anyway, and Pictoplay from United Arab Emirates. All international reviews this week. Thank you for those five-star reviews. That's pretty fun. Uh, okay, we got to jam through this. Here's some quick news before we get to some huge, massive, epic reviews later in the show. First of all, Samsung, they expanded their OLED 4K TV lineup. OLED, you know, you get those inky blacks. So a new series of Samsungs. I know you're a Samsung fan, but uh, as usual, I'm sure these are also pricey. <laughs> so anything special about these? Nope, just new ones. Uh, Samsung, all of their stuff supports uh, AirPlay 2. No home kit support for them because they're going the smart things route. But I... You know what, Steven? I'm tired of reviewing OLED TVs because it ruins all of my, like, seriously, you know, they ship mm. them in. I got a few weeks to run them through their paces and then, you know, ship them back out. And then I go back to my normal TVs and the blooming, the the lack Norms. of the blacks, like, and I don't have, like, you know, bad TVs by any means, but they're not, mm. you know, these gigantic OLEDs that look insanely good. So I can't, I'm, yeah. I'm I over can't. it. I, I can't even look at the OLEDs. If I ever walk into Best Buy, I see the OLED display, and just my eyes start just watering. By watering, I mean crying because I don't have one, and I don't know when I will ever get one. And I also I, don't know. They're still like, so pricey. They're very pricey. Those Samsung start at two thousand, and then only go up from there. But I, I will say, you know, we talked about TVs a couple weeks ago. If you get one with local dimming, it looks pretty good. It doesn't look as good as an OLED, but it still looks pretty good. That's all I'll say. I know. And I know we have to keep pushing through things, but like yeah, recently, yeah. so my sister in law just got married. And this is something that we always run into. Again, we have a very good TV, just not OLED. And she'll have, um, she like her wedding photos on her iPad. And she's mm-hmm. like, look how good these look. Look how good. She's like, here, I'll put yeah. them up on the TV. <laughs> <laughs> they don't. She's like, why don't they look very good? I'm you like, can't see anything. Well, because yeah. you got like a. Fancy iPad display, your fancy phone displays, you know, you're yeah. so much better than what the TV yes. is. And uh, so it's true. really not fair. And it, it, there's such a drastic difference when looking at that stuff. Um, yeah. it's, it, to me, it's almost like the OLEDs versus the non-OLEDs are almost like just HD versus non-HD. And mm, Whoa. That's especially when you're going between the two. When you sit and watch yeah. like the OLED for like two weeks in a row... Your eyes like yeah. adjust to it, then you go back to a non OLED, and you're like, "This, it looks so washed back. out. It's not the I know, same." I know, it's bad. It's wild that the worst display in all of our homes is probably the largest. Like the TV is the worst <laughs> display of all the devices, and it's also the biggest. But yeah. Anyway, okay, we got to keep jamming through. Mer- Maris, ooh, almost mispronounced it there. Maris <sighs> has announced a new contact sensor. It's a door and window sensor kit, like twenty three bucks. You can get it from Maris. Always nice to have another option here. You know, Maris things also do not require a hub. So if you're looking for a nice contact sensor, no hub, this is uh, compatible. This is uh, another great option. So there you go. Maris. Yeah, this one, for some reason I saw something on a tweet or something. I thought this might have been Matter, but I don't want to misspeak now because I don't see it on the product page. So 
Oh, wait a minute. Um, I, just li- I just lied, too. I'm so sorry. Wait a minute. I said this doesn't require a hub because all the other Maris devices I have do not. <laughs> but it looks like all of these kits uh, have a hub and power adapter. So, correction, immediate feedback and correction. Uh, it looks like this does require a hub for the contact sensors. And again, my Maris, Maris garage door opener, light switches, like none of that requires a hub. Uh, but it does a lo- it does look like uh, you need a hub for this. So anyway, just wanted to point that out. Even with like the whole kit is still twenty three bucks. That's hub and the kit. So you know, still pretty pretty good price. Yeah, that's not bad at all. Not bad at all. But it does require a hub. My apologies. It requires a hub. Don't write. Don't add us. Don't write a review saying they that's so inaccurate. They don't know. Anyway, <laughs> it requires a hub. Okay, I said it enough times. All right, Nano Leaf had a bunch of stuff that they announced. New uh, Matter devices. Nanoleaf now has Matter. Uh, were there actually new devices, or is this just like Matter support? I'm pretty sure this is what I saw out at CES. Yeah. So you're seeing like A19 right. E26 bulbs. Those are 20 bucks. Your BR30s, those are 50 bucks. Uh, GU10s, a three pack of those for. Fi- oh, sorry, the, the BR30s, three pack for 50. GU10s, three pack for 50. Um, yeah. The recessed downlight, 35 bucks. Light strip. 50 bucks, all matter enabled. It looks like um, the BR30s are coming in April and the GU10s and the recessed downlight uh, later in 2023. Gotcha. Uh, they have a little video that they put out that, you know, Stephen can link for us down uh, in sure. the show notes and stuff. Um, but they have a little notes. launch video that came with it. Pretty excited that they're finally yeah. kind of getting matter stuff out there. Frankly, I, there's, I'm, I'm going to be able to review them and, Kind of thank goodness they didn't this week, Stephen, because we have <laughs> we have so much, too so much. so much. Um, too so much. this is news, but also we're going to cover this in a, even more in depth in a moment. But the Akara G4 video doorbell with HomeKit secure video, battery powered, is available to buy on Amazon right now. As you hear our and, and see our voices, hear our voices and see our faces on YouTube. <laughs> You can get this on Amazon, $120. It is the most inexpensive HomeKit secure video doorbell you can get. The only one that is battery powered and does HomeKit secure video doesn't require a hub. I'm not going to do the full review right now. But I just want to let you know it is available on Amazon. The link is in the show notes. There is a promo code, uh, but I don't know. It's going to be expired by the time you listen to this, so I apologize. So never mind, no promo code. <laughs> but it's still pretty uh, incredible price at $120. So it's available, U.S. You can get it right now. And uh, we're going to do a, a more in-depth review in a moment. So stay tuned. Stay tuned. And uh, did you want to add anything here? We'll, we'll save it for the review. We'll save it for the oh, review. Oh, we can save it for the review. <laughs> oh, oh, we will save it. We will review. save it. We will save it. Okay, last uh, couple news here. Ecovax has announced some new D-Bots. D-Bot, this is a new robot vacuum and mini. The D-Bot T10 Omni is actually a vacuum and mop. Uh, and then they have other models that don't mop and all that kind of stuff. But this is, you know, taking on the likes of RoboRock and similar robot vacuums and mops. These look pretty nice. I love this base that it comes with. The Omni is $1,200. bucks. Uh, it is on sale right now through March 30th, which is still a sale as you hear and watch us, $900. So less expensive than the RoboRock, but looks really nice. Nice to have another player in the space. Does work with Siri shortcuts as well. So D-Bot. D-Bot. That's cool. Yeah, I have to dig in a little bit, Stephen, because I want to know more the differences between that new T1 Omni and the yeah. X1 Omni that was out last year. Oh, so that was like okay. our second recommendation below the RoboRock. And right. I want to know what changes there are between these yeah. two. So, I did see we'll quickly in. on their website, you know, there's like a new mop washing mechanism and new uh, drying, heat drying. So it should cut down on some of that moisture and like bacteria buildup uh, on the thing. And so, you know, it's got like this double mop thing. Still only one roller. I will say that one bit difference between the S8 Ultra from RoboRock and this one is going to be that double roller for the vacuum part, which I really, it looks really cool on the RoboRock. We'll have to hear from you how that is but but that's just a couple of the the new differences of this uh d-bot it's it's so interesting how things kind of come in waves like right like last year we got like all of the robovax that mopped and vacuumed well and had these empty wash fill stations 
then yeah. this year we're getting all of these blow dryers that are <laughs> drying off all the, the blow dryers. Off. Like this is like the third or fourth one that I've seen that has yeah. that. Um, and if it's not the blow dryer for the mop, the other version is the one that actually has those swappable pads that will dispose of them and put a new one on to also solve that same problem. So right. interesting how these kind of come literally like the same features come in waves. So yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll have to see how it works. Well, very cool. All right. We have some huge reviews coming up, but we do have one sponsor we'd like to thank for this episode, and those are our good friends. You know them well, at Collide, K-O-L-I-D-E, our sponsor. They have some big news, and, of course, if you've listened to HomeKit Insider before, you have heard this news, but if you're an Okta user, listen, if you're out there and you're an Okta user, I would like to know because I would like you to tell me uh, what exactly that is. So t- tweet at us, Mastodon, Andrew, and myself, if you're an Okta user. But if you're an Okta user, they can get your entire fleet to 100% compliance. How? Well, if you have a device that isn't compliant, the user can't log into your cloud ups. They're locked out until they fix the problem. It's that simple. Collide patches one of the major holes in zero trust architecture, which is device compliance. Without Collide, IT struggles to solve basic problems like keeping everyone's OS and browser up to date, and unsecured devices are logging into your company's apps because there's nothing to stop them. But Collide is the only device trust solution that enforces compliance as part of authentication, and it's built to work seamlessly with Okta. The moment Collide's agents detects a problem, it alerts the user, gives them instructions to fix it, and if they don't fix the problem with a set time, they're catapulted with a trebuchet. No, they're blocked from logging into your uh, cloud services. So Collide's method means fewer support tickets, less frustration, and more importantly, 100% fleet compliance. Visit collide.com slash homekit to learn more or book a demo. That's K-O-L-I-D-E, collide.com slash homekit. Our thanks to Collide for sponsoring this episode. Now, I knew about a couple of the reviews that we had going on, and I can't wait to talk about this doorbell. But did you get your hands on one of those uh, $300 Tesla chargers? Did you get your hands on one of those? I did. I what? did. Now, wait yeah. a minute. Did they, did, I, I want to know the, the inside baseball. Like, did you do the pre-order thing, or did they, like, sneak it to you, or are you allowed to say? Or will men in suits come take you away if you say? Um, I didn't <laughs> pre-order it. <laughs> but uh, uh-huh. I don't have an uh-huh. in with Tesla or anything. But okay. I, okay. I worked with the the company called Free Power that that created the technology oh. for inside of this charger. Um, okay. So okay. I, I did get to like check this out at CES, um, but I couldn't take any photos or anything. Then they I could I could try it, I could test it, um, and I could describe it, but I could not take any photos of it. So now the the review embargo is is kind of lifted. This yep, thing is still yep. available for order. Uh, they still say they're shipping in March, so not much time left in March, but these things are supposed to be shipping here in March. But, yeah, mm-hmm. this is a free placement wireless charger. So it'll charge up to three devices at once. You can just throw them on there anywhere on that surface, and they're going to start charging. Right. And um, we first <laughs> saw this technology. Well, I mean, I guess technically we first saw it in air power, but we know how that went. But <laughs> Apple... <laughs> Sure, canceled air power, but then Nomad launched the base station base station uh, Pro. I Pro Max say. Ultra. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep, for sure. Which also used the same technology. And the problem mm-hmm. was Apple dropped MagSafe just after the base station Pro had been released, and the MagSafe magnets screwed with the printed circuit board that was inside of the base station Pro. So it actually um, charged at super slow speeds on iPhone 12 and now like the 13 and the 14. So Era has, uh, I guess, Free Power. They switched their name to Free Power, but they, they went back mm-hmm. to the drawing board. They worked a lot on, mm-hmm. on updating their tech, making it work with MagSafe. And now they uh, debuted it in like their second consumer product, which is the Tesla wireless charging platform. So, I've got it right here. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here it we go. It weighs... 800 pounds. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow, look at that. <laughs> Not joking. It is look very, very heavy. I don't want to drop any on anything. So here it is. So Whoa. many great details that they put into this thing um, that I'll try to touch on. First, you have a the stand at the bottom. This is actually just magnetic. So this is still all metal like stand that just magnetically clips to the bottom. There are two magnets mm-hmm. hiding inside of it. There's wow. cable routing built in so the cable can drop down. 
magnetic attaches to the bottom of it. There are little grooves that this just nestles right into. Uh, between the weight of this thing, the grooves, the magnets, everything together, it just does, it does not move when this is like on your desk properly. So you can use it either with a stand or just kind of flat on your desk. I'm going to set that right, down so I don't right. like drop it on my glass trackpad while I'm like <laughs> showing this thing off. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so you can take anything uh, like your iPhone, set it there, give it a second, it'll detect where it is, start charging. And then you can do the same thing with like AirPods. We can put those on there. And yep, there they go. They're fully charged already, but they would start charging. And you can just start slapping devices down. There went that case. So you can put <laughs> up to three devices on here at once, wherever you want them, and they charge. There's a little status light at the bottom. It faces downwards, like towards your desk or your nightstand. Uh, when you put a device mm-hmm. down, it'll light up for a second to kind of signify that something's charging, and then it'll dim back down so it's not to like blind you at night. Um, mm-hmm. The charging surface is made of this um, Alcantara material, which is used in a lot of like high-end products and electronics and stuff. So like Tesla uses it on the inside of their cars. Um, I believe this is also used on like the Surface products for some of its uh, keyboards, it, like wraps their keyboards. So it's like nice and durable, really soft. But yeah, this thing's mm. really cool. It's just because of the price, it's really hard to say. Yeah, for sure, buy this over a MagSafe charger. But yeah. it's still just a a cool enough charger. It looks really cool. I'm probably gonna keep it around. Um, here in the studio to charge more. Like I have so many phones and everything, I'm always charging up. I can just set stuff down and have them charge that way. Um, includes a 65 watt power adapter. Cable is built in, which is a little bit of a downside for me. Uh, mm. And it uh, can charge up to 15 watts on Android devices and seven and a half watts for iPhones. Okay. I mean, it, it looks really cool. You know, the build quality I'm sure is really nice, but. I, I am now at a place where I don't want to even talk about wireless chargers unless I can charge my Apple Watch, AirPods, and iPhone all at the same time and, like, be done with it. And fast charging for Apple Watch also. I, I do really enjoy that, which, yeah. I mean, it looks it looks super cool. So, I mean, and, you know, maybe in places like, I don't know, maybe like on a coffee table, like in your living room, if you want to just tell people, like, hey, just throw your phone on that thing and it'll start charging. Like, that's kind of cool. That'd be fun. But... Yeah. Where, so where are you going to keep this? Are you going to put this, like, by your nightstand? I'll, I mean, for me, I'll keep it in the studio. Like, I can't – there's yeah, yeah. no MagSafe device that charges three things at once. But if I'm sitting here working on, like, a phone comparison, I've got two or three phones that I've got to charge at the same time. And that's my actual phone that I may also want to charge at a similar time. So having something that I can throw down either uh, earbuds on, phones on, and just have them charge would be really handy. I know that's not a use mm-hmm. case for everybody inside of a – tech review production studio but it at least would work for me for charging these things up Uh, but it's really cool like i don't know it's 300 dollars cool but it's really cool (laughs) yeah it does it does look cool I'll, i'll give you that all right we have two huge reviews we have to get to so let us jump to i'm very excited about this one this is the akara g4 video doorbell with homekit secure video showing it live on camera if you're watching on youtube youtube.com slash homekit insider I set this thing up, and uh, it was kind of a precarious setup. I, I wasn't going to, like, screw it into the wall of my house just yet, so I actually had, like, a stand outside my front door with a little, like, clamp holding this right next to my Logitech Circle view, and I left it there for a couple of days. Hey, it's a camera. If someone's going to try and steal it, I'd get a video of them. But anyway, this camera is super interesting. Very first battery-powered HomeKit Secure Video Doorbell. It comes with a chime, and so this is what you get in the box. You get the G4 camera you also get this chime the doorbell is battery powered this is the one of the few things i'm like not crazy about it's six double a batteries six double a batteries fill the back of this thing it's not rechargeable via like usb-c or something whereas the chime is rechargeable via usb-c so that's always that's kind of interesting i kind of wish this one was rechargeable kind of like the arlo one uh you know i've set that up for friends and family and i like it but six double a batteries but you can hardwire this also which I think is a great option. You know, you can hardwire it or use it battery powered, which is cool. To take the battery off too, or to change the batteries, there's this like weird flap on the side. I don't know. Like you have to unscrew the screw, and then you can take and slide the back off, which I guess keeps it a little more secure. But you know, it's fine. Uh, but other than that, you set it up. I didn't touch the Akara app for setup. I just did it all in the Home app. You scan the code. It's the same pairing code for both the doorbell and the chime, so they kind of get added together uh, in the home app. And it's just like a HomeKit Secure video doorbell, just like the Circle View I've set up, just like the Wemo 
and it has all the features like activity zones, use your home pods as chimes. You can do the facial recognition, you know, all the HomeKit Secure video features that you're familiar with, you can do with this. And it doesn't require a hub. You actually don't need the Acara hub to use this camera, which is pretty cool. And again, $120 as opposed to the Circle View, which is 200 and the Wemo, which is 250 So that's kind of the breakdown. It does connect via Wi-Fi. Uh, Acara says that they're going to update this with Matter, although unless there's some kind of hidden thread radio in here, I assume that that Matter support might come through the Acara hub, which like the M2 hub has like beta Matter support, but maybe you're more familiar with that. But overall, I mean, it's, it's working really well. The video, too, um, I know you've had this for a while. You know, it's widescreen video, 16 by 9, as opposed to the circle view, which is like that vertical video, and the Wemo, which has like even wider, you know, you can see the packages on the floor. And so I think that's, you know, up to preference. If you really want to see like down and see the packages at your door, maybe the Wemo is a better option. So that different video format is a, is a unique choice. But I kind of liked it. I liked it for, for my setup. And uh, one other thing, you can also record to a micro SD card. You put the SD card in the chime, which is kind of funny, <laughs> but you can record to a micro SD card in addition to HomeKit Secure video storage and iCloud and everything. So, yeah, man, this is now, like, available. I know you've had it for a while. What do you think? Yeah, so let's um, – <clears throat> so the first off, the chime. I thought this was a great idea because it's not just the chime. That is actually the hub. So that is the hub. If the chime is unplugged, your camera will not work. So you do have to have the chime uh, to make your camera work. That said, you can turn off the chimey part of it. If you don't want that to chirp at you, you can sure. disable the chiming through that and just use your home pods and your Apple TV and your phones. Um, but that is that is a, the full on hub. So that is the part that's connecting to Wi-Fi then it's connecting to the camera, which is how they're able to, I believe, skirt those issues with HomeKit's persistent power draw since that's plugged in. You just blew my mind because I had this plugged in like while I was testing it and all that, and then I unplugged it because I thought this was rechargeable. I thought like you could just have this around. Not the case. This has to be plugged in <laughs> constant power. Just kidding. Yes. <laughs> just kidding, man. Yes. So, um, yeah, you can't just put it anywhere. Interesting. But I also love that they even put adhesives on the back of the chime. So for us, so I'm using this on our, our rear deck because you can still get into our house. Um, you know, if anyone wants to burglarize, you can go around the back of the house to get in. And we didn't have a camera right at that door. Um, so I now put this on, like, the back, on, like, the sliding door because we already have ones on the front. So this covers the back. Um, the dogs coming and going, some people come over to let our dogs out while we're gone, all that kind of stuff. So I have the doorbell there, and then the chime we have inside, and I have like on the kitchen counter, but I can just run, I've got like a multi-charger, and I just ran a USB cable up, and it just sticks right underneath the counter, completely hidden, tucked away. Just a really nice way to hide that chime um, and act as a hub. And like you said, because it is the hub, you can use it to record video to a micro SD card if you want to have a local copy as well. Um, the one issue that I did have with it, Stephen, and I'm interested on your experiences as you continue to test. Um, I tried to go through the home app and enable just the, um, the notifications or the recording for, like, people, right? Omitting mm. things like birds... Tree branches, <laughs> like whatever else. Stuff? Just going for people, like that. That was my goal. Just so, if, and when any, anyone came out back or walked outside, anything that would, it would catch record. But the animals, it would not. When I yeah, did I mean, that, okay. Did you do that to yours? Well, I kind of had everything turned on, so like it was going to record whatever. So I didn't really toggle these off. Yeah, so my thing that happened was when I tried to do that, I got no recordings. I would get motion alerts, and I, and I would get alerts through the Car app that there was, like, motion detected on, on the porch doorbell or the patio doorbell, but uh, there was no recordings in the home app. And it wasn't until I either turned all of those on or just recorded everything that all the recordings then started showing in the home app again. 
So it's like one of the, I don't know if they weren't talking to one another or the home was being too picky, but I'd even reach out to a car and they're like, oh yeah, sometimes if you have like the filters on and they don't like match, the AI detection doesn't match or something and it won't record into the home app. So mm. I had to turn those off to get it to work. That's interesting. Um, I and did I wonder, notice... Yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, I wonder if um, completely omitting the Akara app would change that experience because maybe there's a disconnect between the two. So I wonder if I had never put it into the Akara app, if my if, if it would work differently. But I don't know. I don't know. I, I did notice... I didn't get any recordings from last night, which I left it set up overnight, and, you know, I had all the things turned on. My circle view, it recorded a mosquito at one point, so I was like, okay. I mean, I don't, I don't know if if the Akara just ignored it because it was too small or whatever, or I, I'm not sure how it decided not to record that. But I haven't tested it for that long. You know, I've set it up for a couple of days. I was getting recordings when people, like, walked up and rang it, which... Again, like that's different than just having it record randomly when there's motion. I might leave it on the record all motion for a while and see what it does, just to see if I get more recordings. Uh, but along those same lines, I did notice, because one of the features I love about HomeKit Secure video cameras is when the video shows up on the Apple TV when someone rings the doorbell. And, uh, you know, for the circle view, that works really great. And I don't know if you noticed this, but the Akara, when you ring it, it does show up on the Apple TV, like you see the video. But it did not play very smoothly, if at all. Like, sometimes I would just get a freeze frame or, like, a thumbnail of the moment after someone hit the doorbell. And if I went in and actually, like, went to view the camera on the Apple TV using a little control center, then it would start loading the live video, and it would be live-ish. You know, it was a little stuttery. But that little thumbnail that's on the Apple TV, like, when you're watching something and someone just rang the doorbell, the Akara one, it didn't look live. Like, it didn't seem... Like it was uh, like updating as quickly as the circle view. Because when someone rings my circle view doorbell, it's pretty solid. Like the video is playing and I see motion at the people. So I don't know if you got to try that or if you saw any other like weird things like that. But that, that was my nose. My and it might be because of the way it's connecting. I don't know. What do you think? I, I've seen that before with other cameras, including the Arlo's, including the circle view. Um, and it's uh, occasionally just seems like there's like buffering, and I don't know wh- who the culprit is. Is it the is it the Wi-Fi? <laughs> is it the hub? Is it the device yeah. itself? I'm not sure what it is. Um, I do wish that it was smooth. It should be smooth, but I, I'm at least glad that I have. If I'm like, oh, I can see the truck. I don't need to know who is walking there. Like, I can see it's a FedEx truck, or I can see it's my mother-in-law, yeah. or whatever the case is. <laughs> so yeah. At least it's something. So- Right. I did see, so it did do facial recognition just fine. So, like, my son rang the doorbell in a test, and it told me, like, looks like Asher is at the door. And so, like, it worked, you know, just as well as the Logitech as far as recognizing people, using your iCloud stuff for that. So, you know, now now that I've just come to the knowledge, because you've told me that the Chime is the hub and that needs constant power to be connected, uh, I'm not as crazy about it as I was before. At, you know, the, the Arlo doorbell which I have I actually got from my mom, the chime there like literally has the outlet plug on the back. So you literally just put it in an outlet and it sits there. And I really like that. And plus if that's not actually what's that? You don't like that? No, I don't like that. I don't have no. so many outlets to spare. And I'd rather have like a multi USB C oh. charger that can power these things at, you know, whatever the five watts that it needs, um, versus like yeah. a whole dedicated plug just to it sure i mean i get that i just prefer like when usually with the arlo when you put it in an outlet like maybe somewhere in your living room or wherever like it's usually a good place for the audio to play and so like you know any usb chargers i would have to put this a car chime in like it's not going to be in a very open place you know it might be in a power strip buried behind something or behind a piece of furniture and then this cable that's just kind of like hanging out I don't know. I, I, I know it was, we just differ there, like preference wise. Like I do like and the, like I said, like, that's why I like mounting mine like in my kitchen under the counters, so it's completely out sure. of sight, and it's just one of sure. like you know a couple of USB cables that we already have there. Yeah, but I will say like now with constant power, like you have to do something with this cable, um, and 
Yeah, I don't know. So anyway, it's still, you know, the only battery-powered option you have for HomeKit Secure Video. It does work with all the HomeKit Secure Video features. You know, you don't even need to mess with the Akara app if you don't want to. You know, you just find a place to plug in the chime, and uh, you're good to go. You can, like, change the chime sound. There's, like, three built-in sounds in the Akara app. And then you can also upload your own audio for the Akara chime, which I thought was pretty cool. So if you want to, like, I don't know, have yourself screaming or something, you can upload a, a little MP3 file of that. Um, and I was last thing I'll say about it, I do like the design, actually, of this button. For some reason, the Logitech Circle View, people don't, some people don't realize it's a button or don't know, like, where to press. I'm not sure why. Like, there's a little icon that shows you where to press. But because it's just kind of like this flat black thing, I've had, like, delivery people not ring the doorbell and just knock, and I'll miss it because they don't think they can push that, I guess. And so I do like how obvious this button is to, like, this is a button. Push this button. Like, I do like that design. Overall, it is a little more, like, utilitarian design. You know, it's just a black rectangle, two big circles on it. So, you know, aesthetic-wise, you might prefer a different one. But, you know, overall, I think it's pretty good. And, again, 120 bucks, is pretty good value. So. I know it's a good value, but it's also the only, the, the, as far as I know, Stephen, correct me if I'm wrong, yes. the only battery-powered HomeKit secure video doorbell. Yeah, it is. This is the only one. Yeah. I think that's, that's, that's your thing right there. For people who don't want to hardwire in a doorbell, but you want HSV, this is your option. This is it. This is it. This is it. So, anyway, you can get it now on Amazon, 120 bucks. Andrew's got a video review. Uh, the link should be in the show notes by the time you are listening and watching to this episode, so you can get even more details there. But uh, we'll follow up, too. Battery life, I'm curious. A car said four months uh, for the 6AA batteries for battery life, depending on how often it's recording. So uh, we'll have to report back on that and see uh, when these batteries actually die. I'm going to leave mine hooked up, and uh, we'll see. We'll test it. But for our last big review, Andrew, I am... A little envious about the devices that you're about to talk about because, uh, you know, if you saw that this episode dropped a, a few hours later than normal, it's because of an embargo for a special device that I don't have. I can't hold this in front of the camera. I don't have it. But Andrew has it. Andrew, tell us, what are you about to review? I've got two things to oh. check out here. Same company, two yeah. versions. Yeah, um, yeah. We're gonna yeah. start all right, with all right. slightly less exciting. <laughs> you're you're over it, and we I'm haven't so started. I'm so mad. Um, this right here ah. is the Sonos Era 100. Oh my word! Right here, this thing, it. 249. Uh, it is slightly taller than the previous generation Sonos One. You guys are familiar with those. A um, yeah. few things I like uh, just out of the bat. There's a Bluetooth toggle right here on the back. Really easy to swap over uh, to Bluetooth mode if you're going that way. But, of course, AirPlay 2 is my preferred method. And down here at the bottom, you have a microphone toggle. Hardware switch to turn that mic on and off. It'll completely disconnect the microphone, um, I believe. So to completely kill the voice assistant features if you're going that way. Um, we did have a question from somebody on Twitter. Um that I had not really kind of gotten into at all, but that was whether or not the uh, Sonos speakers were ever going to incorporate Siri. Uh, just like the, the Ecobee thermostat can use Siri as a voice assistant. These have the microphones, these have the means, the capabilities, but they do not have that feature. And the, mm -hmm. the I would just say that there was that whole thing with Sonos going to Congress and complaining that to put Siri on a device, you have to have a, uh, a HomePod. And mm -hmm. it seems like Sonos does not want you to have to have a HomePod to put Siri onto your device. So mm -hmm. I don't think that we're going to see Apple's Assistant on Sonos uh, anytime yeah. soon. Yeah. So I, I don't think that's going to be a thing. Um, so the top of these guys was updated with new controls. So you have this like slider now, which is very nice, very hard to get that on camera. But we have a little slider there, so you can slide that up and down to adjust volume. A little mm. bit easier than what they had before, just kind of tapping willy nilly. Right. Um, right. Overall, these th this does sound good. This does, I would say that it sounds better than than your Sonos One, but uh, this is not. Like when I'm super excited. Oh, by the way, I guess for comparison's mm -hmm. sake, 
because uh, I have one sitting also next to me. This is oh, the HomePod. Sure. Oh, okay. I thought so, you were going to show the other one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's taller. Okay. Size-wise, a little taller. Looks pretty similar otherwise. Interesting. Interesting. Um, in terms of, like, dimensions. But, yeah, so we got that guy. The one I am most excited about. Mm. The new the Air 100 is is fine. It's a good upgrade, but it's not going to make me go from a Sonos One. Like I got to have the new Air 100. Yeah, like, yeah. that's not going to be a thing. But yeah, I am excited for uh, this. <laughs> man, that right there, that is the deal. The Air 300. Cool Air 300. Yes. Sheesh, four hundred and fifty <laughs> bucks. Hundred and fifty more than the HomePod. Is it, so talk to us about I mean, this is more expensive than the HomePod. Do you have a pair? Do you have a power a pair of them or just one? No, that's the thing that I'm so so this does do spatial audio by itself. Because sure. there are like six drivers in here going up to the sides, like everything. So this does do spatial audio by itself. So you can listen to spatial audio on this, whether through Amazon Music, I believe Apple Music uh, spatial audio, right? Steven is coming to yeah. these guys as well. Spatial audio is coming to Sonos March 28th, same day as the Apple Music Classical launches, same day that the Airs are available in store. <laughs> yeah. I was also going to say, I guess we should have thrown this in the news. I, if I had to bet money, I would also bet that's when we're seeing the release of 16.4. Oh. Oh, 100%. 100%. Yeah. This Tuesday, March so, March. Tomorrow, like, tomorrow. Classical does not require 16.4. No. Um, and neither does, like, Sonos Home Siri or Sonos uh, Spatial Audio Capabilities. Like, that is not tied to 16.4 uh, in any way. But it just seems like a good lineup. Like, it, it, Tuesday is a day that I would normally, normally launch stuff, um, like software updates. We got spa- or the classical music coming out that day already. And we got RCs uh, previous week. Uh, that you guys are listening to this of right. 16.4. So 16.4 is probably going to be out with like the new home architecture and other changes like that on the 28th. So, I mean, um, how's the sound? How's the sound compared to the HomePod? Oh, I think it sounds better than the HomePod. I mean, it's, it's hard not to True. when it's this big, like, and spatial audio wise, HomePod can't compete there. Like you can do spatial audio with a HomePod when you're pairing two of them, with your Apple TV, and yes, you can pair two of these things with your uh, Sono soundbar, the Beam second generation, and the Arc, and you can right. use these for Dolby Atmos spatial audio that way. But like in terms of just like by itself, like HomePods can can they do stereo on their own? Uh, I don't even know if they can do. I'm pretty sure you. Could, I mean, it's a stereo. So when you add a HomePod pair, it's stereo. No, I'm talking about one play... one HomePod. Oh. Can it do anything? <laughs> I think a HomePod has Dolby Atmos. Uh, By itself. But now, I'm going to check. I'm going to check. I'm going to check. You check. Because I don't stuff. know. I don't know if it does. Um, just like by itself as a singular device. And this does do a really good job with the spatial audio as a solo device before you've even set it up with your TV or anything like that. Okay. Apple, so Apple am bummed. It says one HomePod can do Dolby Atmos. Okay. So you only need one to do it, not necessarily two. With your TV or, or just like playing music to it on the shelf? Just like playing music to it or airplay okay. to it. So, yeah. Okay. Then if it does, the effect is much <laughs> more muted in comparison. I mean, this thing yeah. has like literally like, you know, the, the – Upward facing drivers. HomePod does not have a straight up facing driver in there um, versus this. This right. sounds really good. This sounds. This is this is easily one of my favorite speakers. I'm bummed that I only have one of them. I'm gonna have to go buy a second one and figure out where I can try to put two of these as rears in our living room because I don't have power um, like behind. Like it's an open back like living room, so mm-hmm. I don't have any power where I could put these things if when I pick up the second one. So it'll be interesting to find out. Mm. I mean, you're gonna, you're ending yeah. up with a pretty expensive Sonos Atmos setup at that point. I was going to say, I mean, would you, I guess, use these as the rears, and then that would be, you know, because Sonos sells the theater packages of, like, Arc, Sub, and... Mm-hmm. 
Yes, for sure a lot. Um, but aside from just being your rear, they're also going to be able to do like your left and right audio and your upward facing audio that you would get with Atmos that you're not going to get with a set of ones. Um, which is why you can also 